show you this hymn book that I'm playing from because it belonged to my grandmother. Um, her name was Theodosia Brooks Fry. I may stand up while I talk for a little bit. My eyes are really bad, so you'll have to forgive me. Um, my grandmother, Theodosia Brooks Fry Hawkins, was born in South Georgia in 1906. If you do a little math in your head and look at me and calculate that, um, you may find that that's surprising and becomes increasingly so as I tell you a little bit about her story. She was a school teacher, like I am, who found love a little later in life, and she married a much older man in the year 1942. My grandfather was Edgar Allen Fry, and he was born in Smith County, Virginia. He was born in 1874. My grandfather, 100 years before I was born, and it was by a sliver of a chance that a man who had buried one wife and an infant daughter in Virginia soil would find his way to Georgia and would father two sons in his quite old age. His firstborn son was John Blair Fry, my father. The home that they built together was filled with singing, much of it around an old upright hemp piano with a hymn book on it. Now this was not the hymn book that they would have used, uh, mostly. I don't know if you remember the old shape note hymnals, um, but that's what my grandmother mostly played from. But my father gave his mother this hymn book um, in 1975, um, and then they returned it to my family to give it to my son, who played the piano at the time, and they passed it along. So she would have played from it, and I can see her notes in it throughout in some places. <clears throat> so my daddy sings bass. After he returned from a year in Vietnam and finished a master's degree at Georgia Tech Engineering, he moved to Macon, Georgia and joined the choir at Vineville Baptist Church. He saw my mother, another school teacher, sitting in the alto section. They first started talking at a choir Christmas party and they fell in love singing together on the front porch. Daddy playing guitar, and Mama singing and harmonizing along with him. Glenn Campbell was a favorite of theirs. I literally owe my life to church music. I've heard the hymns of faith from the womb. It wouldn't take long for me to start singing them too. This is my story, this is my song, sung with four-part gusto, was how Sunday night church began at Vineville Baptist Church, just about every week. As a child and teenager growing up at that church, I sang on Sunday mornings, Sunday evenings, and pretty much all day Wednesday. I played in hand battles, sang in children's and youth choirs and other ensembles, and was there for every rehearsal and every performance of the living Christmas tree. The songs I sang reflected the faith that was passed down to me and became my own expression of praise to my creator, my redeemer, and my comforter. My minister of music baptized me. I was six years old. You can find his name if any of you have seen and used this hymn book. His name is on the editor's page. His name is Lloyd Landrum. So I can still name the hymn numbers of most of the hymns. Not, that's not true of many of the hymns in here. I don't know if you could do that. So did anybody use this one at any point in their faith story? Or is this so this familiar? I have another one that I'm going to have to switch to in a minute. But I can still name some of them. One of them is uh, 475, a favorite. Anybody have a guess what 475 in the old hymn book is? I know Randy knows because he has those memorized too. He grew up in the same book and had to switch like I did. 475, Victory in Jesus. Oh, yeah. Let's sing that one together. 